Can you really live without it? We go to war for it. It's used in hospitals to save lives. Raw, it's toxic. It powers our cars, runs our American infrastructure in more ways than we care to acknowledge. And to date, we've used one trillion barrels of it. The substance that I'm referring to is oil. It seems to have a nearly infinite number of uses. And as is so often the case with interdependence on such a level, it has a chokehold on us. Take, for instance, we have roughly 3 million miles of paved roads in the US. Now, 5.7% of most asphalt is raw oil. Do the math on that, it's eight inches thick. That is a tremendous amount of asphalt, strictly used to pave the roads that we drive on. That doesn't go into the tires that are built into the cars, the cars that have petroleum products that are run off of petroleum product, the kayaks that are protesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're crippled without it and do slowly kill ourselves with it. In the society that we live in, we cannot do anything without it. We're dependent on it on such an intimate level that it's our responsibility to know how to use it and know how to manage it. And offshore oil drilling is the next logical step. In researching this topic, I concluded that what would give my argument the most strength and momentum is understanding the opposition, and after having done my research, it's clear to see that the pros far outweigh the cons of offshore oil drilling. I would like to explain the importance of offshore oil drilling, what the risks are, and how to responsibly and reasonably assess them, as well as what the rewards are, and how offshore oil drilling has the potential to moderate and manage many of the problems that we in society currently face today. The problem is that we've taken a handful of sincerely regrettable incidents and used them as a barometer by which to make policy. We are voluntarily hobbling ourselves in a seeming act of repentance. When we could be taking advantage of the opportunity to change and improve both our economy and the environment for generations to come. The problem here doesn't lie so much in the fact that we're making a conscious effort to avoid environmental disasters, so much as it does in the fact that we've chosen to cripple ourselves in the process. Take, for example, the Exxon Valdez incident, where over 10 million barrels of crude were spilled into Bristol Bay, Alaska. The fact remains that we are very much dependent on petroleum-based products, from our ailing economy to our insatiable appetite for fossil fuels. To date, the world has used one trillion barrels of oil for non-fuel-related items. Reserves hover at just one trillion remaining barrels. However, the easy oil is gone. The evidence that supports these elements is plain to see and quite frankly terrifying. In an article by the Scientific American, written by David Biello, the startling facts and figures that stood out, head and shoulders above the rest, were that in 2011, we used $490 billion worth of gasoline. That's up $100 billion from 2010. Oil dependence on land are tapped out and virtually inaccessible. With a growing appetite for oil, we're faced with limited options. Exxon Valdez was truly, truly a regrettable incident that spilled 10 million barrels of crude into Bristol Bay. But this really isn't the startling fact in this story. The startling fact is the figure, sorry, is that roughly 2%, this is an outdated version, so it says 2.9%, roughly 2% of the oil that is spilled in America we spill 2% of the oil in the water. However, 47% occurs from natural seeps. Yeah, that's interesting. That is the presence of... This problem affects every man, woman, and child, and negatively impacts all marine life. From, uh, from clams to seals, fish to right whales, which are an endangered species, in choosing not to capitalize on offshore oil drilling, 
We're choosing to thumb our noses at a valuable resource. We have the ability to improve our economy and the health of our oceans. 75% of the world's oil basins have naturally occurring oil seeps. <coughs> It was once stated that we're 70% more perceptive to the negative, and I feel this is especially true for topics like this. There's really no one-size-fits-all solution. For, there's no one-size-fits-all solution for a problem as dynamic as our addiction to, offshore, to oil, but offshore oil drilling is a good start. Expanding offshore oil drilling and exploration has the potential to curb oil imports reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Um, in doing so, we also reduce our, our forward dependence on oil, increase our energy portfolio, and create jobs. The best immediate solution is to formulate a situation-specific strategy for offshore oil drilling, and couple that with proven contingency plans. Experts have estimated that between Delaware and Florida, there's this little guy right here, Florida's <laughs> down here, about 200 miles off the coast, on what's known as the Outer Continental Shelf, or the Atlantic Outer Con Continental Shelf, there are 3.3 billion barrels of oil in reserve, um, lying in reserve. Uh, development of this Outer Continental Shelf has the potential to generate 280,000 jobs and add $195 billion in private investment. This solution is not intended to solve the problem. It will, however, buy time until it can be properly addressed. Um, so what I want you to do is think about the seals hmm. um, and approach this situation with an open mind, think of the good that can come out of this for the environment, for the economy, and for future generations. Do your research, take a look at the world that you live in, learn about the process from both sides. Thank you for listening.